Big divot. Keep my dad happy. Bob McIntyre now. He's given a very good account of himself so far in these last couple of days. And another fine shot there. That's my phone. My mum. What? You can take it. Yep. Yeah. Hello, mum. Hello, sorry, I've got a missed call from you. Ah, you're all good. I was looking for my wallet. It's on the Glidden's table, I think. It's in my pocket. All right, you must have picked it up then, did you? Aye. All right, okay. Right, bye. She's not got a Scooby. <laughs> So Oban as a town, I think it's uh, about 8,000 people that live in the town and I think it triples in size with the tourism. And it's massive in seafood. I think it's actually this, one of the seafood capitals of Scotland. I don't just enjoy the two hour journey from Glasgow Airport. There's a reason why I live here and probably will do for the rest of my life. So this is us coming up to the school. I absolutely detested going to school. I'd done what I needed to do, then went to the States and there was an 18-year-old kid from a small town in Scotland, still living with my parents. When I went there to college, I just managed to learn how to cook, learn how to do my washing. Um, and I think that's a massive part in learning how to, to play professional golf as well. I'd done a year and a half in Louisiana. I loved to have done four, but I think I'd done the right thing in coming home and, and chasing my dream quicker. I gave myself a four or five year plan um, to achieve what I was trying to achieve. And if it didn't happen, then I'd have went and got a job as a tradesman somewhere. I mean, obviously I've played well, so it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit. Here we are, arriving back at Wincruton. Not busy at all today. My dad's the head greenkeeper here at Wincruton. This is where I was as a kid. This is where I grew up playing my golf, learning how to do things, and I love every minute of coming home. To see Bob, you know, making it, everybody's happy. Everybody, he's really put Oban on the map. Phil Mickelson, I absolutely said to him, you're the, you're the top left-hander in, in the world. And he's proved that he is up there with the best, you know? Bob really has got that talent that, that shone through, and it was always going to be his destiny. 1983, Dougie Jr., that's Bob's dad. 1984, could have been there a lot more, but he didn't play as much as he should have in the competitions. Bob takes it after his dad and his grandfather, not forgetting his grandfather, who was another brilliant player. He's been well taught by his dad and his grandfather. My mum and dad's house here perfectly located on the golf course. We used to call this a back garden, and you've got 12, 13, 14, 15, four holes over the road. That's what we call it. And then you've got the rest of the course literally at the other side of the house, so prime spot. That'll be close. I mean, I've lived here for about 15 years with my mum, dad, my two sisters. And before that, we lived next door. And then mum and dad had this land and decided the family was getting bigger and whatnot, so we had to build a bigger house. I mean, I go in that house and no matter what I've done, whether it's good or bad on the golf course, I'm always the wee boy in the house, the youngest. That's the reason I still live here. My first memory is really of me coming out with my dad's old cut down set when I was, say, about five, six year old. Just hit the golf ball, or tried to hit the golf ball. I used to play this every single day until I was about 17. Literally the high school's a 10 minute walk from the clubhouse, so I, mean, I would come up here. Even in the winter time when there was only an hour of daylight after school, I would just go and practice, go and enjoy myself. See the Christmas trees in the distance? The one furthest right, then you've got a gap, then you've got the next row of about eight. You're just hitting it in them first two after the gap and hope it goes straight, because if it doesn't, it's lost. I mean, most people just play for the five, but not today. It is safe. 
The greens are small. It's a premium on hitting the ball straight, and for me, that's that's kind of my game. I like the golf courses that are difficult for that exact reason that you can't miss it, and that's what this place is like. I mean, it's mainly catching your breath is the hardest part around here. <laughs> One take. <laughs> that was pretty good, that. That's, that's not the normal. Normally it's a four or five up here, but we'll take the three today. <laughs> I'm home. I've had four hole-in-ones at Glen Cruton, um, the most memorable one here at the 15th, playing with my dad and my two pals. I was one down against my dad and my best mate, and I mean, I must have been 12 year old. The pin, it was a championship pin, so it was tucked just over the bunker. I'd say 122 yards. My dad and that had hit it into about 15 feet, 10 feet, so we were, I mean, we were beat. If something lucky didn't happen, and thankfully I, I hold it one bouncing straight in and then I mean he was shouting, my dad was shouting at it, that's in the bunker, that's in the bunker and I'm just watching it and, and it went and then I took off. No one could even give me a cuddle or anything, I was took off round this green about three times. Just hands in the air celebrating, just, I mean it's the best feeling in golf isn't it, hole in one. Normally 122 yards it's either a, a gap wedge or a pitching wedge flighted in but I mean it's a strong wind. 20 odd mile an hour and it's cold so I'm going to try and hit a little nine. It's a tough pin that one as well. Because if I pull that slightly right, which I am fond of, then it's away down the path into my mum and dad's house. It's on the green. I mean I remember the first time I beat my dad being the only boy in the house and your dad being a good golfer, it's your life goal. But he still beats me now and again out here. He's not too bad himself. It's just all good memories that come back when you're back here and playing. It's not the weather I come home for, it's the people. Just left the golf club, heading down the street now. Shinty pitches over there on your left hand side. So here we are, Shinty Sticks. Um, they travel the world with me. Majority of the time they're in the golf bag on the, in the travel case. Um, as one of the clubs, when you're growing up in Oban, you're either Shinty football or rugby. It's what I love doing and um, obviously still do it. And I just enjoy it that much that I can't get away from it. So you've got 12 aside that are on the pitch. Obviously the pitch is a lot longer than a football pitch. There's a lot of running involved. It's not just stand there and hit it. Too high. I stopped playing for six years, for the obvious reasons. Imagine getting this across your hands. I stopped playing for the sake of getting injured. And then I still play. I mean, I kept it quiet for as long as I could, that I was just training and stuff. And then the week of the Ryder Cup, I scored away from home, and it got all over Twitter, and everyone knows I play shinty now. <laughs> My first season on tour, and I'd made 11 out of 12 cuts, and I was doing well, but I wasn't enjoying it. So I came home, I was meant to go to China that, that night, and I flew home from Morocco, and I said to my, I said to my dad and my mum, I said, I need to do something different here. My dad just smiled, he knew what was coming. And I said, oh, I'm gonna go back and start playing shinty. And funny enough, I played that week, that was meant to be in China, I trained on Tuesday and Thursday, Played a match on Saturday, went to the British Masters, finished second, took a week off, played shinty training Tuesday, Thursday, played a match Saturday, went to Denmark, finished second. So it works. It's a win-win on hand-eye coordination, clearing the mind, it's got everything for it. Nah. For me, when I'm on tour, I feel like I've, I've got to act older than I am. When I'm on a shinty pitch and I get to go on a journey with the boys, I can be that 25-year-old boy from Oban rather than being a professional golfer.
one of my favourite places. This this is where I live, and I love coming home to Oban. I mean, I sit in that couch in there, and I just, even if it's pouring the rain or it's misty or anything, I just look out there, and you can hear it. You can hear the the sea, and um, even at night when you're sitting on the couch, you can always hear the waves crashing in when the tide comes in. I love it here. I remember my mum working three jobs at one point just to fund my amateur days. Um, my dad's always worked as a retained firefighter and a, a greenkeeper to let me chase a dream. And thankfully I get to travel the world now with them at times and get to live here. Next five years, obviously I want to be world number one golfer on the planet. I've won a major. I have a happy, healthy family that I've already got just now. Right now, I'm not really worried about five years' time. It's just now I'm in a great place, physically, mentally, and my family are in good health, so that's all good to me.